What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Knives at the Round Table. My name is Marco and today I am doing my first ever State of the Collection. And I think it's a it's it's a good video to start the year with, right? You know, what does my collection look like right now? And I wanted to do right now because I am about one of my new year resolutions is to to kind of shrink down my collection. So so this is probably the, the largest it's ever gonna be my collection this is the largest gonna be so this is gonna be a, a, a for reasons that will become clear this is gonna be a long video so i'm gonna try and give you by brand you know the the knives that i have that way you can just jump if you don't care about you know a, a x or y brand you can just jump to the <coughs> to the ones that you actually want to see and I decided to start with Benchmade. And I'm starting with Benchmade uh, because this is kind of where it started for me. Um, you know, I I had I had my 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 Swiss Army knife. I've had, you know, I had other knives, but you know, I came across, you know, back when when uh, Ben Banters <laughs> uh, was doing his uh, still doing the the social media, the YouTube for, uh, for Blade HQ, and you end up with, you know, they, they are a big uh, kind of advocate of Benchmade, so I ended up, my first kind of uh, pocket knife that was a little bit more higher end than just a Swiss Army knife, ended up being a Benchmade, and this is kind of my current lineup of Benchmades, uh, I, what you do not see is I had the the Crooked River, the full size. I had the Contego, the you know full size, and those are four inch blades, and I no longer have them because they're 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 way too too large for me. So, so my two knife comparison knives. Oh, uh, there's there's uh, there's reviews for. About 90% of these knives, 95% of the knives that I'm going to show throughout this, this state of the collection. So if uh, so, this is not meant to be a review of any of these knives. This is kind of just a showcase. If you want to see a review, you, you'll find it on my channel. <coughs> Most likely. Uh, I don't have reviews for 100% of my knives, but probably for a good 90% of them. So, so I, and I'll let you know if there's, if there's one where I don't have a review. Uh, so my knife comparison, uh, 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 my knife comparison knives, uh, two of them are the mini bug out and the full size bug out. And it's because I believe that even though the 940 is, uh, which I do not have, uh, is probably the most iconic knife, uh, of the Benchmade lineup. I, I, I believe that the bug out is, is probably gonna become the the benchmark of benchmade uh there's just a lot of aftermarket support there's a lot of scales there's a lot of hardware uh, for them there's a lot of variants this is the aluminum variant um uh, in the m390 steel uh and i think and i do think it's an excellent knife it's probably one of my most recommended knives uh the mini bug out it's it's kind of my my athletic wear uh, type uh, knife. I put in a, a carbon fiber scales. These are aftermarket as well. It's incredibly light. Uh, so, so those are because they they they're very common. They're not uh, hugely expensive. Although Benchmade's becoming uh, ridiculously priced and lately, especially. Uh, but I think it's I think a lot of people are familiar with these knives. And that's why they're my 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 kind of my size comparisons my favorite benchmade is the mini adamas it's kind of a little tank and i just i love this knife i i think the the action the size the blade thickness that it's, it's got a crew wear blade on it i put a mirror edge on it you can see it's it's been used for sure uh it's probably it's my favorite knife of that benchmade makes it's it's a tank but it's a little tank and it fits my, I wear large gloves and it fits my hand very, very well. It, it basically, 
it's kind of the perfect size for me. I don't worry about it. It's very robust. It's an excellent knife. Uh, this here's the bailout. Uh, there's uh, several versions of this. Uh, I pulled the trigger when they came up with this kind of orange and, and blue. It kind of was kind of a different kind of thing for me. Uh, very good knife. Uh, very much in the in the flavor of the of the Benchmade bug out. If a little bit. Uh, you know, obviously a tanto blade and uh, just a little bit longer, but very much in that in that weight category, slim th thinness, uh, all of that you'll you'll get from bailout. My only gold class of of Benchmade, uh, some of the gold classes uh, are ridiculously expensive, and the first one they, they come up with this. This is a Tengu Flipper. And it's a smaller knife, but it's the first time that I thought, you know what, it's it's more expensive for sure, but it's not ridiculously so. So I pulled the trigger. This is my only gold class. It came with with this with this very nice sheath. It's kind of a gentle and scary uh, for me. Uh, so that's that's my that's my uh, my only gold class, and my my only uh, fixed blade is the Hidden Canyon. Uh, this is a very nice uh, uh, little fixed blade. This is an S30V. There's also an S90V version that I would like to have. But the problem is that I like this sheath that came with the S30V. So I have to either pick the steel that I like or the sheath that I liked. Uh, for this size of a blade, I don't need uh, I, I don't need uh, very much robustness. So so S30 S30V is 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 probably fine. Uh, very nice little fixed blade. Uh, it was uh, I've, I used it a lot, especially in the beginning. Now I have a lot of fixed blades, but uh, that's kind of uh, that's kind of the only fixed blade I have. I've seen some of the the autonomy, the 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 saddle Skinner. The there's a bunch of them. I just uh, my preferences, especially in fixed blades, they go towards. You know more towards Bark River Knives or you know TRC or or those kinds of brands. So guys, that's what I've got of Benchmade, and I'll show you the next one. Okay, so the natural transition from from my collection of Benchmades is obviously Spiderco. It's kind of the direct kind of competition. And it took me a while to get into Spyderco. Uh, you know, the the blade shape, the bird looking leaf uh, is, is still something that I'm not entirely 100% uh, on board with. Uh, but as a collector, you know, you start, you start collecting knives and, and, you, and you start hearing more and more and more you know, about spider going, you hear all of these things on people that just collect PM2s, you know, and, and, and eventually I got curious and I started looking at them and curiously enough, the ones that I, that, that I started looking for, I, my first spider in my collection was this one. This is the Rubicon 2. And I thought that this looked a little bit different from that. It still looks a little bit weird, but I thought at the time that it didn't look as weird as these PM2s did, you know, the, the leaf shape. But it was discontinued at the time that I that I started looking for one. And so so I bought, I had to buy this on, on, on I think I bought this on the secondary market. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, and then the one that I liked was the Domino, and the Domino was discontinued as well. It's one of the few, very few, uh, Spydercos that has a frame lock. Uh, I think uh, I, I think the Domino is one of Spydercos' best knives, and the blue carbon fiber is my favorite. I had the red carbon fiber at some point. I sold it uh, when I finally managed to get my hands on the on the blue carbon fiber. Uh, then, uh, you know, I finally, I pulled the, the trigger on a smog and then it's, and then it's been a mess, right? I've, I, I've just, I, I think, I think they make really good cutting tools, uh, even if they're not the most aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing, uh, knives out there. 
but this is kind of what I have right now. I'm trying to make room for for this big boy. This is my latest edition. This is just a bird. Uh, hopefully you can see all of that. It's it's a little crowded in here. Uh, so what I have is the PM, uh, paramilitary pair three, the PM two, the subvert. This is the smock which ha I put uh, my in my own uh, uh, kind of customized uh, scales on. This is the chubby. I love the shape of the chubby. I just wish it had a better action. Again, this is another frame lock. They don't make this one anymore. It's very hard to find. Uh, you can only find this in the secondary market. Uh, then the Blade XQ exclusive of the of the Tanto of the Tanto blade of the PM2. I love the grinds on this. I think this is this is this is kind of a great. Uh, uh, my out of the out of the kind of traditional spider coats that are in production today, probably my favorite is the Manix Two. I, I think this one, uh, the size, the action, the the ergonomics of this just fit my hand perfectly. This is probably my most recommended spider coat. You know, especially if you've had Benchmate, you know, uh, the compression lock, it's it's a very good, it's, I like the lock a lot, but if you're coming from a center, uh, from kind of a center uh, access lock style, uh, then then you go with the, with the Maddox. This is one of my most recommended. And, you know, uh, I usually don't keep uh, knives with blades this long, but damn if I haven't enjoyed the heck out of the subvert. This is... This is this this is virtual pricing. You can still find this one. Uh, you cannot find this one. You cannot find that one, or that one. I believe the rest of these you can find. Um, this one uh, kind of gets sold out, but I think they're still making it. Uh, these uh, the pair uh, pair two and pair three uh, you can you can get in all kinds of steels and all kinds of bla and all kinds of uh, kind of grind not grinds but. Uh, blade finishes you know you can get the 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 dlc coated or the or the satin and by far i think that spider co for both the pair three two uh the manix the smock they have probably some of the best aftermarket uh, uh support out there you know so these are sporting uh kind of this is nebula carbon fiber scales this one is uh, Mandalorian uh, uh, titanium scales, uh, and you can basically find whatever you want. So uh, that is what my Spyderco collection uh, looks like. No fixed blades uh, from Spyderco for me. I think they look horrendous. Uh, maybe I should give them a chance, but uh, I just have a lot, a lot more other knives that I want to, that I want to test out. Um, so again, uh, this is probably the last time you'll see all of these. Uh, uh, like I said, my, my New Year's resolution is to, to compress my collection. So some of these are not going to make it. So I'll see you with, with the next brand. And now we're going to continue with two brands. And in my head and in my own thoughts, uh, they kind of, uh, they're kind of in the same kind of, uh, category uh, very well made American uh, made knives and that is Microtech and Zero Tolerance and what we've got here uh, this is the the um, Microtech Amphibian uh, they recently came up with with this with this kind of access style lock they call it the RAM lock uh, you've got the Microtech MSI this was super hyped uh, I don't think it quite lives up to the hype. Um, I think the the action on the RAM locks they still need to tweak it a little bit. It's it's you know yeah you can close it fairly quickly, uh, but it requires a little bit of risk to deploy. Um, uh, for Microtech, uh, obviously they're they I think they're they're primarily known for their automatics. Uh, this is this is the Ultra Tech in the Warhound uh, grind, which I it's kind of my favorite grind that they do. I think it looks it looks fairly badass. I think uh, my only uh, out the front knife. I'm not huge on out the front knives, but I wanted to have uh, 
kind of one and if you're going to have one i think the ultra tech is probably the one that you want to have and for me if you're going to have an ultra tech might as well be the warhound um and then this is the microtech stitch now there's a version of the stitch in the ram lock uh in the ram lock um uh, lock uh, manual deployment which is not an automatic this one deploys with authority so these are huge knives uh and then for zero tolerance, uh, the one that I believe is probably one of the best values uh, in knives today, you know, I think it's the 0562. Uh, this is zero tolerance. You get an M390 blade. This is by, uh, kind of very similar to the design of a, a Rick Hinderer design. This, it looks very similar. It has a very similar design to the, to the XM18. Uh, but it costs about half <laughs> of what the XM18 costs. So uh, very good value, very good uh, fit and finish and quality. It's not 100% an XM18 in terms of fit, finish, quality, all that stuff. Uh, I think you get about 90% there. But it's not 90% of the price. It's about half the price. So this is like really, really good value now for me i'm a huge hinder fan you'll see them here in a little bit uh, so most likely this one will not stay in my collection this is probably one of the ones that's gonna go, uh, uh, go away because i find myself though even though it's a really good value i do have the xm18 which i do think it's a better uh i think this is a better purchase if you want to be a uh, frugal if you want to be smart with your money if you want to just if, if you're if I'm not very smart with my money. If you're into knife collecting, you're probably not. Uh, but um, if you have the DXM18, you probably don't carry this one very much. At least I don't. I did for a long time. Uh, you can see it has a mirror edge on it. Uh, but once I got the XM18, this one basically has never seen my pocket again. And then my favorite zero tolerance. And uh, this is discontinued. Uh, this is uh, designed by Dmitry Sinkovich, uh, by uh, Zinkovich Design. This is the 0456. Uh, I bought this on secondary market. Uh, it was discontinued when I started getting into knife collecting. But uh, when I saw it, I love the sheep's foot style blade. I love the size. It's, you know, compared to, to the 0562, it's a little bit shorter. The blade's a little bit shorter. It fits my hand very, very well. I think it's a great design. I really hope they bring this one back. I think, I think, I think they should. This one is, is just a great knife. So this is kind of my, uh, let's call it my my workhorses uh, that are American made. Uh, Zero tolerance, Microtech. Uh, they make great knives, and this is what happens to be in my collection. And we're going to stay right here in the United States and we're going to be talking about one of the, you know, the holy trinity of knives, uh, Mount Rushmore of knives, whatever you want to call it. And that is for Chris Reeve knives. And we have the Chris Reeve Umnums on in the Tanto grind. Uh, I've had this knife for a while. Uh, it's kind of one of my favorite knives. Uh, it's just... I've I've had some work done on this knife. I but it's 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 kind of it's kind of a workhorse. And then the iconic uh Sabenza, this is the Sabenza 31. As you can see, uh, I don't have the 21s. Uh, by the time I got into knife collecting, the 21s had uh, were already being phased out for in favor of the 31s, and this is kind of the a unique graphics version. I put an aftermarket uh, a Timascus pocket clip because it kind of goes with the with with the look of the of, of the of the show side. This is the Blade HQ exclusive, uh, and I think this is it's either my, my Magna Cut or S forty five VN. I can't I can't remember, uh, but this is the Blade HQ exclusive with a carbon fiber. I think it's one of the coolest looking subvances out there. Uh, I I generally don't generally don't get the same knife, just different scales. But I think these are different enough. Uh, you know, this is more of a stone wash. This is kind of a satin. Uh, this one's unique graphics. This one's carbon fiber. Anyways, I I decided to pull the trigger on that one. Now this one 
it, it's kind of a unique uh, thing in the in the Chris Reef lineup. Uh, they were doing Sabenzas and they decided to do this one. This is the Sabenza 25. And they I think they only did it for one year. And at that moment, I think they decided uh, that this one was a more kind of a standalone unique knife. From this, you know, you've got it's you've got a, a heavier duty washers, you've got a little bit heavier duty blade, you have the contouring of the fingers, which you do not get in the Sabenza. So this one later became the Incosi. Uh, so this is more similar to the Incosi than it is to the Sabenza, even though it's called the Sabenza 25. And I just love having this one in my collection. This one has aged beautifully. Just look, it just it just drops. It's so smooth. Uh, Sabenza 25. Now you can find this or, or something that looks exactly like this, but it's going to be called the Incosi. Uh, and again, this is the... The, the the blade HQ exclusive with the carbon fiber, and then this is the small Sabenza. This is the small Sabenza 31. This is in the uh, what you call it, which would uh, uh, box elder, I think it's probably. Uh, and this is the the tanto blade uh, of the small Sabenza 31, and then finally this is the knife art exclusive. In cozy, so you can see this is the small in cozy, so you can see uh, these kind of look similar. Uh, the in cozy in the in single blade, that's what they call their sheep's foot. Uh, this is, and I have a uh, uh, aftermarket pocket clip on this. I do, you know, halfway through making this video, I decided that uh, that I was gonna uh, the fixed blades are gonna get their own video, and this one doesn't want to behave so. Uh, the fixed picks are going to get their own video, but I do have a uh, Chris Reef Pacific and a Nyala uh, for fixed blades that you, you'll, you'll be able to see when I do my, my, my fixed blade state of the collection. This is kind of what I have uh, as far as Chris Reef knife, some of the best knives you can buy for sure. Uh, you know, especially if you, if you keep them a long time, you know that they do, they do uh, kind of break uh, breaking just beautifully the especially my my so it's a 25 and my umnum on uh they've this one's not yet a uh, drop shutty uh and their, their actions for deployment is not as snappy as what you're going to get from a lot of other stuff but the, but the build quality of this if you you'd be hard pressed if you if you only had to choose uh kind of one knife for the rest of your life and you know something that was you know a uh, hard working tough robust uh, well built all that stuff you'd be hard pressed to find a better option in uh, than chris reed the umnum's on for sure my most recommended is the the large in cozy uh, but it's hard it's hard to argue against uh, the iconic class of this event so, so anyways that's what you have what i have from Chris Reeve Knives. And we're gonna continue here in the United States in the high end. Now we're gonna continue with the holy trinity of knife makers. And this is Rick Hinder Knives. Uh, it, Rick Hinder is the, is, it's the first knife maker. I had the Zero Tolerance 0562 and I thought, man, spending $250 or thereabouts of what the 0562 cost, that was gonna be my limit, my absolute limit. I couldn't believe that I'd spend that much money on a knife. And then I had the 0562 and I saw that it was modeled after the XM18 and I broke down. And this, and, and, and Rick Hinder was the first one that, that actually got me to spend you know, four hundred and fifty dollars uh, or more on knives. As you can see, it got out of control. Uh, as you can see, if you keep watching this video throughout all the brands, you'll see that it got way more out of control. Uh, but but Rick Hinder is is a knife maker that I think 
that I think has done a lot of, uh, of really, really good things, you know, when, so, so he came up with the kind of, uh, the over travel stop, uh, that you see here, this little disc that you see here back here, uh, tucked up in the pocket clip. So that's, that's his over travel stop. He came up with, with the, with a triway pivot system. You can see it denoted right there. And the triway pivot system is a system in case you don't know, where you can go from Teflon washers, phosphor bronze washers, or bearings uh, with the same knife. It has a system inside where you can you can swap back and forth depending on what you want. If you just want fastest action, then you go with bearings. If you want, you know, kind of harder use, uh, you know, uh, you know, if you're going to be in, in in gritty environments, then you may want phosphor bronze washers, and you can switch back and forth. So, so this is kind of my collection and. This one's the one that started it for me. You can see it's been it's been well used. This is uh, the, what they call the working finish. This is the one that I've used the most. And Rick Hindered has uh, has a thing where where if you start start getting into it, I'll show you here. But there's a whole religion around the filler tabs because you can change the pocket clip from from tip up to tip down. Uh, so you can move the pocket clip from here to here, and then you end up with a hole. And obviously this is called the filler tab to fill that hole. So there's a whole religion uh, that, that's a, a koi uh, uh, filler tab. Only the people <laughs> who collect uh, hinder knives know how rare some of those are. Uh, and then with Rick Hinder, you can get, for example, this is a... Uh, this is a and or uh, a Rick Hinderer original aftermarket scale. He does his own aftermarket scales or a large portion of them. This is the XM18. This is the three inch version of the knife. That's the three and a half inch version of the knife. Uh, so uh, what you have, this is the slicer grind. This is the, uh, this is the fuller spear. This is a spear point. That's a skinner. Uh, and what you see here, uh, I put, you know, these nuts that again, they're aftermarket. Uh, the filler tab is also aftermarket. The screws, these screws are not Rick Hinder. These are uh, by TI connector and I like their screws quite a bit. So I've used them, uh, but I basically built this knife completely. By the time you're done building something like this, it's, it's pushing seven or eight hundred dollars between the scale which is about two hundred and fifty dollars and the hardware a hundred and the filler tabs and again this is a whole religion uh this one um uh, i had uh a, a titanium scale from rick Hinder, which i had engraved and i think the guy who did it is from midnight sun industries and he did a really really good job i like the I like the, the purple theme of this knife quite a bit. Now we're getting into kind of some of the jewels of the collection. So this one is a, a custom Rick Hinder. In other words, this was done by Rick Hinder himself. He ground it himself and you can see, usually you, you, you see that it's a, they're hollow ground, the, the, the customs and so this one's uh, this one's a little bit older. This one doesn't have the triway pivot system. Uh, the action on these is very smooth, but um, but the detent is uh, is a little bit soft on on some of the older hinderers. But this one is the grinds are just are just beautiful. And this one, I put this one. This is from Steel Flame for Rick Hinder. So this is an original uh, uh, kind of pocket clip. But this one is um, the Crusader pocket clip. And again, only if you know, you know, these are kind of rare, hard to come by as well as the, the Crusader filler tab. Those, those are harder to find. What I did is I put uh, this horse head titanium scale on it. And that's again from, from Rekinder. You can see the two the two different ages, right? Uh, a little bit lighter on the older, and a little bit uh, darker on the on the scale that I put after market. I think I've got this one running on 
on the phosphor bronze washer right now. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, custom hinders are, are difficult to come by. Now this is kind of the, it's one of, it, it, it's kind of the crown jewel of my collection. Uh, you're gonna see uh, this one right here. I'm gonna show you here in a second. Um, but this one is, uh, Rick Hinder makes a series called the Containment Series. And you can see it by, by the kind of biohazard type uh, thing uh, engraving that you see here. Now, what I really, really, really like about this one is I managed, well, I bought it aftermarket and the guy who sold it to me already had this, uh, this bead on it, which is just matches perfectly uh, to it, right? Uh, but I managed to get the biohazard bronze nuts uh, for it. And I got the 2020 biohazard COVID filler tab for it. And I got a biohazard pocket clip. So at this point, all of this is, is just outstanding, right? Uh, the, just to give you an idea, I put a picture on this and I wanted these nuts uh, to, uh, to complete the build. And some guy on the on the Rickiner forum just sent them to me for free. <laughs> just it's it's some some people are just are just that cool. Uh, so so anyways, uh, what I really like about this one is uh, out of the containment series, I think this is the one that I like the most. The blue with the bronze, all of that I think I think goes really 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 well. But also for me, the containment series of of the year twenty twenty. Uh, for most of us, COVID happened in 2020. Even though it's called COVID-19, uh, when it finally reached the U.S. Uh, and when you know started the lockdown started and all of that stuff, uh, that's kind of when when it happened. So for me to have the continued series of 2020, which is kind of where you needed the masks and all the biohazard and all that stuff, I just feel like like this is a, a, a knife very representative of the pandemic. Uh, you know, so um, I tried to have, uh, I had a, a horse head um, scale and I tried to have it match the same colors. They didn't quite get it. They got very close, but it's probably close enough for for me. So uh, very rare. The containment series knives are very, very rare indeed. And that's why you see me uh, place it <laughs> kind of on the lock side because I think the lock side is, is it, it's where it's at. And then my latest acquisition, and for the life of me, I still can't believe that I managed to snag this one. Uh, this is the Queen of Hearts. Uh, this is a Rick Hinder full track in the Triway Pivot system, and it is one of the card series. So let me try to explain that. So. The card series, uh, Rick Hinder, uh, around Thanksgiving, picks one of his models, the, 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 uh, full, the full track, the half track, the fire, uh, I don't know, fire tack, the XM-18. He's, he's picked several and he makes it into a deck. So what he does is he makes, obviously, a deck of cards, 52 knives, plus some jokers. Uh, and he does them in a one of one. Basically, there's only there's only a single Queen of Hearts full track out there. There aren't two of these. And the fact that I managed to snag the Queen of Hearts, you know, you could get like the four of clubs or whatever. I think I think we can all agree that having the Queen of Hearts is probably a lot cooler than having the four of clubs. Uh, but these are amazing for a long time. Uh, the full track had been discontinued. This is kind of their reintroduction of this model into into the market, and they did it with a bang again. This has the steel flame uh, pocket clip, which actually came with the knife. It it comes with with a number of filler tabs. Uh, this this model has this tool, and you can use this tool to disassemble the entire knife. It's part of the knife, so that's really really nice. So this is uh, 
I think I think I have a very good collection of regular knives. So this is my workhorse. Is this kind of my run of the mill? Even if it does have kind of this unique uh, tab on it, uh, this one's a little bit a uh, uh, rarer just because the this is the monkey edge frag pattern horse head for the three inch. That's a little bit hard to find that scale. Uh, the continuity is very difficult to find. Uh, the the the, uh, the custom, and then I think you know this is gonna be one of fifty two. So this this collection, uh, it, it kind of portrays kind of how how much I I enjoy Rick Hinder knives. I enjoy uh, customizing it, my knives. Uh, one of his uh, kind of mottos is make it your own, and you can see. All of these I've made my own. The only one that I haven't modified at all was this one. This one and this one is because I've had for a few months, for a month or a month and a half or something. I probably won't modify anything on it uh, just because it is what it is. Uh, but this one has the filler tab, the the pocket clip. This one has hardware pocket clip, filler tab, all the whole work. So, uh highly 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 recommend rekinder knives i think they're awesome i think you could spend your entire life just collecting these and customizing these you'd be perfectly happy uh i've certainly been very very happy with 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 my with my hinder collection and and the the facebook groups of the community around these knives is just it's just outstanding so that's what we got for rick hinder Okay, so again, I'm gonna group these knives uh, kind of similar to what I did with Microtech and Zero Tolerance, and it's because these 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 three brands, uh, again, they kind of occupy the same kind of category in my mind. Okay, and that is Sharp by Design. Uh, these are designed by Brian and Doe. Uh, Brian uh, Brown knives. And this is something obscene company. So most of these uh, are, I want to say they're all made by Riyadh, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but they're mostly designed, in the, uh, mostly designed by, by US guys uh, made overseas. Uh, and what you have here is the, the these are, this is uh, something obscene company. This is Brian Brown Knives. And this is uh, uh, sharp by design. Um, this is the, the the Evo, and this is kind of uh, out of this bunch. Uh, this is the full dress version. So this is, or did he call it the half dress version? Uh, anyways, this is Timascus with with damascus steel. Uh, really, really, really cool knife. Uh, actually, for for me, this is kind of the perfect size. They he has like like four sizes for his Evo. This is the, the micro Evo. There's a mini Evo and that I think it's even smaller than this. And he's got like the, the regular grind. That's kind of what you see here. And then you have the the, the compound grind that you see there. Uh, really, really cool knife. Very, very cool action. He does do customs. Uh, if, you're, if you've ever seen a Metal Complex's channel, uh, you've probably seen uh, his 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 uh, his archangel. Um, so this is the uh, Brian Brown um, knives Raptor. I think this was the Knife Joy exclusive. So so kind of a a Warren Cliff uh, uh, blade. And uh, this one has the black bicarta with with the Timascus. Um, I I haven't carried this uh, this lately. I think. This may not stay in my collection. Uh, this is the Raptor, and I just love the look of the Raptor. The only problem is that my large hands, this the scales are so tiny that it kind of disappears in my hand. I don't feel I have a good purchase on it. So this is also uh, most likely gonna be gonna be sold as part of my my New Year's resolution to kind of compress my my collection. Uh, this is the J Cape and the Mini J Cape. 
I want to say this is the, the version one and this is the version four or thereabouts. Anyways, this is an evolution of this one. And it was a really, really good evolution. The later versions of this are, are much better, especially in the ergonomics department. The scales are contoured. I mean, obviously this looks really cool with the, uh, this is the Gecko Customs uh, exclusive of the J-Cape with this uh, yellow, uh, green, and blue uh, carbon fiber. Uh, but there's a bunch of versions of this of this knife. But the contouring uh, is 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 really 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 good on the J-Cape. Uh, the action and everything is really really cool on on the original J-Cape. And I think that the blade is kind of one of the coolest blades that you can find out there. It's really, really good. It's really, really functional. And I just, I, the, the grinds are just, oh, the way the, the flat intersects, the hollow with the flat and the flat right here is just, I think it's just, it's just incredible. I think it's really, really cool. And this is the mini version uh, of the knife. This is the original mini version of the knife. So again, this is, this is also uh, flat here, it's not contoured. I hope that he comes up with a, with a contoured version of the knife. Uh, they're just much more ergonomic. The, the original J-Cape and the mini J-Cape, it feels like you're holding a two by four. It's, uh, it's just, just flat scales with flat, you know. Yeah, they're contoured, but, uh, but the, the, the rounding of the scales for this one is just, just really, really great. So this is, uh, this is kind of uh, one of my, uh, and again, I'm not certain that Riot makes these. I'm not sure who makes these, uh, but uh, probably at least one of these. Uh, but they're made of overseas, and I think uh, most of these make their customs. But again, but they're like, you know, in the thousands of dollars, uh, whereas these are in the in the four hundred dollar range or, or thereabouts, give or take. This one's a little bit more expensive just because of the damage still on the Damascus. And I think there's there's a there's a full dress where the, the Damascus is the whole scale, I think. Uh, don't quote me on it. Uh, but it's 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 polished. It's this one's really really cool. Um, great designs for these makers. Uh, I would say that the later versions of the Jacob are outstanding. I think that the the the, the regular Evo is outstanding. Um, the rest of them are really are, are really solid knives. I think if you have a kind of medium or smaller hands, I think you'll really really enjoy the Raptor uh, for sure. Uh, uh, this is the Raptor, and this is called. Uh, they're not both called the Raptor, obviously. I'm not. I can't remember what this one's called. Uh, but anyways, I think I think that you that that you would enjoy it um, uh, quite a bit. And I think these are these are excellent, excellent design knife makers, and you get a lot of value when when you know, when they're made overseas. You know, there's a lot of politics that go into into overseas made knives, but they're actually they're they're actually quite excellently built. Uh, uh, highly, highly recommend, especially uh, this one and especially this one, the Evo and the JK. Outstanding, outstanding knives. So continuing in in the kind of overseas made U.S. designed uh, uh, category, what we have here is the it's Enrique Pena, uh, Ramon Chavez, and Leon Ma, and. And I, I do believe that these are all made by Riyadh. So you, what you have here uh, is the Mini Diesel. This is the, the Knife Joy exclusive. Uh, it has the, the Timascus uh, pocket clip and the Timascus pivot color. It originally came with brown uh, micarta. This was my attempt at dyeing them black. I couldn't get it fully black, so it's kind of kind of in the middle. Uh, this is the the Peña Rhino. Uh, it's I, I I like this knife quite a bit. I think it's I think it's excellent. Uh, but this was uh, this is the camo version by my McNeese knives. Uh, that's uh, so this was not done by me. This is this is this is OG. Um, you've got the large Apache, and this is also the I think this is the Knife Joy exclusive. With with the Damascus and the uh, the Damascus uh, pivot color, 
and this is the large version of the Apache um, the Apache in in these kind of uh, modern traditional type knife the large Apache the Apache in general but the large Apache in particular is the one that I like the most and uh, this is the uh, the Chavez um, I said the Redención Street, I think. So this is uh, uh, the 229 is identical to this, but it's a large knife. It's a very, very large knife. The size of this one is is perfect for me. Again, I wear large gloves and I like a knife where, where when, I, when I put it in my hand, I don't end up with a whole hot bunch of scale, you know, hanging off the back. You know, I think uh, there's people that need a lot more blade. Uh, for me, three and a quarter, three and a half inches, uh, that's where it's at. And this one actually uh, fits perfectly. <coughs> With the introduction of this model, it's the first time that Ramon Chavez finally acknowledged that not everybody likes to have a skull. And he provides a regular pocket clip for it. Uh, I think it's, I think it looks really cool. So I keep, I, I've kept it. Uh, but, uh, so this is the, the, the Redención Street. <coughs> And this is the, the Leong Ma Warrior 2 version 3, I believe. I think that's what it's called. And I like this knife quite a bit. I think it's got like this kind of katana uh, compound grind going. I, I, the action on this is phenomenal. It's, it's outstanding. I hate the pocket clip. It's got this, this sharp point that I've cut you know, leather sofas and all kinds of stuff. I need to grind the heck out of that. Um, but I think, but if you see the similarities of grinds, you'll see the, the Riot uh, kind of uh, influence, I guess. You can see uh, uh, kind of a lot of the same, very sharp uh, transitions, very well done. I think Riot just, they, they do some of the some of the best <laughs> knives out there for sure. Uh, Again, I understand that there's politics involved with, with the overseas manufacturing, but the fact that you can get, you know, uh, if you ask Ramon Chavez to make you a knife, it's probably a $10,000 kind of thing. And the fact that you can get this for whatever, $400, uh, you know, it's, you wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. Uh, and I think that the fact that they make knives for Enrique Pena, for Ramon Chavez, for, for Leo Ma, it's made it so that Riot basically has this set of eyes as QAQC, this set of knives as QAQC, and this set of knives as QAQC. And all of that supervision and feedback and comments and all of that has made them just just really, really good knife makers. They, uh, they don't, they, I think they do really, really good stuff. Uh, uh, again, uh, I, I, I would highly recommend uh, any of these knives out of the out of the the Peña knives, I, the Rhino, I think it's probably uh, my favorite. Uh, it's it's close, but the but the lock bar axis on the I, I have a bone to pick with 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 Peña and his lock bar axis on 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 a lot of his knives. The Rhino doesn't suffer from that. Uh, I like this one a lot. I think the Redemption Street is just outstanding. I think this is an incredible knife. Uh, I would highly, highly, highly recommend. Uh, it's thumb stud only, but it's highly recommend. And the action on the Warrior 2 version 3 from Leon Ma. I think this is, this is awesome. I hate the pocket clip and I love the pivot. Uh, but, you know, you sometimes you can't get everything. So anyways, this is kind of my continuation of kind of American design with overseas manufacture of the knives. So this set of knives, I don't know where to put. I don't know what category to put, put them in. Uh, you know, I either just have one of a, a, from the brand or it doesn't kind of fit with, with other makers. So, so, so I'm kind of doing this kind of hodgepodge here. Uh, what you have here is the Urban EDC Supply F five and a half. I like this knife a lot. There's a this is the brass version. There's a Sega version. 
This is the Todd Begg uh, Mini Bodega. Uh, that's back when Todd Begg was still part of, of, of what's now Begg Knives. Uh, this is the Tuya NV2. Uh, this is the Cancept Knives Mini Exhibitor. This is the Coke Tools Warhawk. Uh, this is a Urban EDC uh, Nat. Uh, this is the Maniago Knife Makers Vincent in the Toxic Green Carbon Fiber. Uh, Ziva Heritage, uh, Kunwu Knives Padre, and the Quiet Carry Drift. So um, I I like the F five and a half quite a bit. I think the sheep's foot blade, the size of the the size of the knife, the uh, the action. It, every I I like basically everything about this knife. The the, the the mini bodega was kind of one of my my fancier purchases back when I started. I it was one of those Black Friday type of impulse buys, uh, but I like it a lot. Uh, I I think the the jeweled uh, ice titanium that's got on the pocket clip, the ceramic detent, the all of the milling that you have here from from the from the diamond. Uh, to the speed holes with the kind of fuller uh, the same here uh, on the side you have a diamond pattern on the back spacer uh, there's just a lot of things happening with the mini bodega I, 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 I like it a lot it's one of my son's favorite uh, knives uh, uh, we've had it for a while the Tuya Envy uh, I haven't carried a whole heck of a lot uh, I just have so many other knives but it, it, it becomes a fairly compact knives. It, it has outstanding, you know, it's an M390 blade, uh, a titanium uh, a frame lock, a really, really nice action. It's, it's, it's a, a, there's a fairly good value with, with two your knives. You don't get 100% of, uh, of the fit and finish and niceties. You know, for example, you've got a compound blade but the transitions between the flat and the hollow and the flat, they've been kind of uh, polished, rounded off, right? And I don't like that quite a bit. Uh, but it's but it's a it's a really decent value. Um, the Kensip Knives Mini Exhibitor was my first uh, front frill front flipper, and I'm not uh, great at front flipping, uh, but I like this one quite a bit. I like the uh, especially this this version of the knife. Uh, with the with the Timascus insert, the Timascus pocket clip. I wish that they had done a Timascus backspacer. I think they were already on there, but you know. And then you've got uh, a damn steel blade. I think, uh, and this is not as expensive as you might think. I think this is like, I want to say it was like three hundred dollars or something. But for those materials, it's kind of rare. Uh, then you have, you know, these are just kind of my. Uh, these are just for fun right these are not highly functional knives uh the gnat you know it, it's got the <laughs> the uh, bottle opener i even put a ridiculous <laughs> bead on on the warhog you know it's got the chat nichols damascus blade with the stormtrooper titanium it's just it, it's 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 a fun knife but it's not very practical uh you've got the uh, mkm vincent uh, and this one uh, I, I, I tend to gravitate a lot towards Boxman's designs. I think he does really, really good designs. Uh, and this one has, uh, I doesn't see a lot of pocket time. I think this one's going to leave my collection in this, again, this effort that I have of kind of, kind of reducing my collection. Uh, there, I think this is going to be one of the casualties. Uh, the Ziba Heritage, I like the, the lines of this knife quite a bit. Uh, I wish... Uh, that the so the carbon fiber on this is called cookie kind of carbon fiber it came very very pokey okay it required a lot of sanding on my part to get it to where i would actually carry it now it's uh now it's where i where i enjoy carrying it quite a bit it's kind of a smaller knife more of a i want to say gentleman's carry but it's a little bit more aggressive looking that i would like for 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 a. uh, uh for a gentleman's carry but the fact that it's uh, a slip joint you know where it's it snaps here in the center and it snaps there at the at the end it it 
it removes the 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 nervousness of people whenever you 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 you, you grab a knife and you go and you go like that. Uh, people get nervous. Uh, so uh, kind of more of a of a party carry for me. Uh, the quiet carry drift, uh, one of the best knives uh, out there. It's it's really really good. Um, it's got very very thin blade stock of of Vanek steel. I use it a lot for uh, for whenever I, I I'm gonna I feel like I'm gonna get into a river or a lake or something, and I want to have a knife on me. This is the one that I that, that I grab. It's it's basically uh, basically waterproof for all intents and purposes, um, and and that's it's got a very good niche in my collection. And then this is kind of more of a recent edition of last year, uh, the Kunwu Padre. I think this is an excellent. Knife. This is this is really really good. That for the price, uh, I want to say three hundred ish dollars, um, you get a blade that's very similar to the uh, to the blade of the of the CKF Evo, uh, and I think that's one of the coolest looking blades. It's it, it's got a kind of a obviously a different scale, different handle, different basically everything. It's different enough where I don't think it's a copy uh, by any stretch, uh, but I do uh, but I do think that this is excellent value. And and it's and it's available. So so if you wanted something that has the Evo blade without the Evo scarcity or price, then the Padre uh, the Kunwu Padre is is certainly for you. So this is kind of a just a mishmash of of knives uh, that don't fit really well into 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 any other group of my collection. So I'll see you with the next group. So now we're going to continue with the American made uh, knives and we're kind of getting into, into kind of that higher end. Uh, we're pushing uh, $700, five above $500. I think this one was about $500 or 450 ish. Uh, probably 500 for this one, definitely like 650 ish for this one, for this one as well. These ones are probably 700, 750 or thereabouts. And what we've got here is the Curtis knives. This is the F3s, F3 small, F3 medium. We have the Medford Theseus, the Medford uh, uh, Midi Marauder, not the Slim Midi, this is the actual uh, uh, Midi Marauder. This is Medford Ares. It's kind of well, one of my favorite uh, small knives. And then the Micro Praetorian. So, uh, I think uh, I like Medford knives. I've got four of them. I've had about probably five or six, maybe. I, I like them. I think I think they're well-made knives. I don't think they're great ergonomically. I think you know it, it, it always feels like you're holding kind of a two by four. They're you know they're not contoured. There's not a lot of, a lot of ergos there. I think they're a bit overpriced. Uh, you know this is this is s thirty five yen, and then if you're pushing seven hundred dollars, you're kind of you kind of wanting a little bit more, you know. They, they don't have um, uh, lock bar inserts. Uh, they're running on on phosphor bronze washers. Now they break uh, they break in pretty good, uh, but I still think they're a little bit overpriced. You know, they're always they're they're all hand ground. You can tell the the marks. You know, they kind of follow follow the tangent of the of the secondary uh, blade here. Uh, so, so there's there there is some value there. They're American made, all of that, but I do think they're a little bit overpriced. I think maybe at twenty percent uh, overpriced. Not to mention, I mean, if you want to, I, I I've certainly decided what to do with my money, uh, and I won't tell you what to do with yours. It just from a value standpoint, I don't think they're uh, they represent the most value. Now, I do think that there's a lot of value in Curtis knives. Uh, these are full customs, uh, and to get uh, full customs for seven hundred ish dollars is kind of rare. Uh, now he does use machines to to do, do his knives, but these have some of the coolest actions, especially in deployment. You know they've got a huge uh, flipper tab, and that's kind of a uh, some people love it, some people, some people hate it. I love it. I think the deployment on these is is uh, incredible. This one's dam steel with the kind of jig, titanium flamed, all of that. So I think uh, I think these represent really, really good value. Uh, uh, so this is the F3 small, F3 medium. Again, 
Theseus. This is the Galaxy, and I don't think he makes this one anymore. You won't find the Theseus with the medallion pocket clip. Uh, this one's really cool. I, I really like this as the pocket clip. It's not secure because it doesn't bend. Like, even if I push it, it doesn't close in. Uh, so it just hangs from your pocket. So if you're going to be doing anything, you know, any running or that kind of that thing, then maybe you don't carry this one because it might jump out of your pocket. But if you're not, it, it, this just hangs from your pocket. And I really like the, the, the Medford logo just kind of hanging out of your pocket. And my name is Marco, so that kind of kind of works out. Uh, this one was the, the Monkey Edge uh, exclusive, the Monkey Edge track pattern uh, medium marauder. And this one's probably my, my favorite of, of the Metfords that I have. I wish that it was a little bit more ergonomic. Uh, this, they're, they're thicker blades, they're well made, they, you know, they're uh, phosphor bronze washers, they're, they scream heavy use, but they're uncomfortable to wield. <laughs> uh, so maybe maybe with gloves or something like that, but I, I wouldn't, I, if if I'm gonna be doing a lot of cutting, I'm not I'm not taking my Medford with me. Um, again, I really like uh, the Medfords. I just don't think that they represent a tremendous amount of value. So we'll move on to the next category. Okay, so now we're gonna be moving into probably my favorite brand of knife or my my favorite brand manufacturers, and this is Custom Knife Factory. And as you can see, I've got a lot of them. Again, my goal, eh, I'm gonna probably reduce to about half of the knives that you see here on the table. Uh, but the, the, the reason, eh, if, you, if, if I had to pick just one manufacturer to kind of collect for the rest of my life, it would probably be custom my factory. And the reason is because what they do is, while they do have some original designs, eh, most of the time they partner up with a, with a, with a knife designer they come up with a design and then it's manufactured by custom knife factory so so what happens is that you get like like really good designers like for example this one and this one is peter Rizzanti. this one is a uh, marfion from microtech uh, john Sorensen. so so you get uh, a lot of these guys that are just kind of titans of of of, of uh, knife designers and you get a manufacturer uh, that goes that goes that does really 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 good work. They do really good action. I believe these are made in China, but I think custom manufacturers out of Russia. Uh, <clears throat> but so you have here, for example, this is the Marauder, okay, and this is kind of a beast. This is this is huge. This is probably one of the ones that I'm going to be selling uh, here in the in 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 the near future. Uh, this is the Satori uh, from Peter Resenti, integral knife. Uh, very cool, very uh, unique carry. I think I'm gonna keep either this one or this one. I'm just gonna keep one of the Resentis. Uh, this is one of the original designs. This is the Sukhoi. This is a monster and I love this knife. I wish that they made it a, a little bit smaller. It's just, it's it's huge. It's, it's kind of a four inch blade. But I, I just love everything about it. I think the, the carbon fiber inlay, the, uh, the Tamascus, the, just the, the action on this is just insane. It's really, really, really nice. And this is the Sukhoi. This is the Gnome. Uh, it's kind of one of them. Uh, if you see the rest of these, uh, maybe not that one, but most of them kind of have a very strong, aggressive presence. Not the Gnome. I think this one is... It's kind of the bug out of Custom My Knife Factory. It's a front flipper, uh, but it's it, it carries really, really well. Uh, and if it were a, 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 a flipper type, I don't enjoy the front, front flippers uh, all that much, but I think it's a very a very clean, very simple design uh, that that is really, really well done. Again, the, the pop of color with the Damascus, I think this is, this is really, really nice. The Sokosha, so this is again, this is the uh, a collaboration with with Marfion from Microtech. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite uh, uh, knife from Custom Knife Factory. Uh, the liner lock, they, they do excellent action. It's just, it's really, really, really good. It's uh, it's fairly ergonomic. I like the, I, I like everything about it. I, I, I really like this knife. Um, 
the the other Peter Versenti, this is the Satori and this is the Snafu. And they did three kind of versions of this and this was my favorite version of it. Uh, again, integral with a uh, Timascus on the, on the pivot color and on the pocket clip. Uh, really, really, really nice uh, and compact knife, uh, perfect in, in my hand. Uh, I'm only gonna keep one of these two. Uh, one of those two is gonna be sold. Now, probably the most iconic design from Custom Knife Factory was by is by uh, Rotten Design, John Sorensen. This is the Evo, this is the 2.0. Um, I do have the 3.0, I have two 3.0s. Uh, they just don't fit on the table. Uh, and one of the 3.0s is gonna be sold here in, in, in a little bit. Uh, but probably the most iconic uh, design from Custom Knife Factory, one of the most unique blade shapes out there. Uh, and probably my favorite knife that the uh, Custom Knife Factory does. And then one that kind of uh, has grown on me and has kept growing on me is the Rampage. Uh, a very clean uh, knife. Uh, it has a lot of little details. You know, you've got the skull on the on the deployment, on the on the thumb stud. You've got Timascus on the pivot color, front and back. You've got a Timascus pocket clip. It's held really interestingly, like like it, the, the titanium's been milled and the screw goes in through the side. It's kind of an interesting way of doing that. I like it a lot. Uh, you know, the the back spacer with the, with the lanyard uh, uh, tube included. Uh, really, really nice action. Uh, this one was designed, I believe, by a jeweler. Uh, um, and... So <laughs> well done by, uh, by, by the jeweler who, who did this. So this is, uh, uh, again, I think these are made in China, uh, but uh, kind of assembled and, and uh, the company is out of Russia. And it's, it's probably uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, companies uh, to have knives from. I think they, because they work with so many uh, knife designers, I think this is different designer. Uh, this is one designer, different, 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 different. So because they do with so many designers, you you never you never end up uh, with a certain flavor of a knife. You just you end up with a very very uh, group of very original designs. Uh, none of them look like another except these probably these two, and only in the fact that they're integral. Uh, all the others I think look uh, substantially different from each other. So let's check out the next one. So now we're getting into the real crown jewels of my collection. This is a, we're only, a, we're only gonna move up. And it's not a, a step further, but this is kind of a hodgepodge of high-end knife makers. Uh, I mean, it, it, it'd probably be hard uh, for you to not recognize the Grimsmore Norseman. Uh, and then this is the Koenig Arias, one of kind of, I, I would, if I had to pick a category for all these knives, I would call them the kings of machining. This is the Rockstead Higo X. It's, it's, it's very hard to capture the mirror polish of, of that blade, but it, this is just an amazing, amazing knife. Uh, this is the uh, Hold uh, a Haptic, okay. This is the Skiff Made Blades Drifter, and this one happens to be in, you can see that I use these knives, okay? They're not, I have no safe queens. Um, so this is the Skiff Made uh, Drifter in damage steel, really cool knife. And this is the Herman Knives Sting. Uh, so I think out of all of these, probably the lowest end is probably the, the Herman Knives. Um, but in, in, in quality, I think the machine, especially of the, especially of the scales, uh, I think it's on par with kind of the, the hold and the skiff. This is uh, I think, I think Herman knives has done a, a, a really good job. This one's a little weird. This is an M398. Um, and I think, uh, so this is a liner lock. And the detent's a little bit, just a tad bit soft. I can't fail it if I if I if I if I try. 
so I think the action on this one is just just not exactly, especially like like the hold just is just an incredible action. This one is phenomenal action on this one, and then uh, you know the 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 guillotine action of the of the of the Grimsmo Norseman is kind of well known and well documented. So this is kind of my kings of machining uh, uh, section, right? Uh, I, all of these people are make really, really high quality knife, really, really high end knives. Uh, you know the 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 cheapest one of the bunch is probably around seven hundred dollars for the for the Herman, um, and then probably the the Grimsmo and the and the Koenig about seven fifty eight hundred dollars or thereabouts. And then, uh, and then you're probably right around a thousand or eleven hundred for for the for the Rockstead Higo, the Higo X. Uh, this is uh, the Holt Haptic, and the Skiffmate uh, Drifter. Uh, these are amazing knives. And these are really, really amazing knives. Uh, hard, you know, they they could be they're worth you being uh, a grails in in anyone's collection for sure. Uh, I've been fortunate. I have uh, all of these. Uh, I think I'm uh, out of my collection. I think all of these would stay in my collection. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe the Herman knives. Uh, the I, I do fidget with my knives, and this one's not so fidgety. It, I, it, it the blade is relatively th uh, thin as or light as compared to all of these. Probably about the same weight as the Holt. But it won't drop shot, uh, so so it's not as fidgety. The the halt is just a, it's just it, it's a fidget toy. This one just all day, it's it's just it's just really 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 good action. So maybe this one goes. I haven't decided. So, uh, I, of me compressing my collection, if I had to pick one, that's the one that would probably go. But again, so these, uh, these are probably worth your being. Like I said. These are, this could be grail knives for, these are worthy of being in that category of a grail knife. I think the, the Hego X is, is just a masterpiece of, 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 of production. It's just, it's just really, really well done. So let's take a look at our final category. And now we get to the end of my collection and I'm going to end it with kind of the brand that has my favorite knife in it. This is Shirogorov knives. So uh, uh, Sergei Shirogorov, they make uh, knives. They actually make their, their knives out of Russia. And uh, a while back, I, I bought the F3NS and all of these four are F3NSs. Uh, I had a, a bronze one that looked similar to this one. And then I had a blue one. Uh, it didn't kind of look any anything like this. And it's really the best knife I've ever had. It's it's uh, it has the best action, fit and finish, ergonomics, just everything about the F3NS. I think is a, in my opinion, is it's kind of the it's the best knife out there, or the best knife. If I had to pick just the best knife in my collection, I would say the F3NS. Uh, you know, there's there's ones that you know that that look a little bit cooler, but if you uh, measure everything, the ergonomics, the cutting, the design, the fit and finish, the action, everything about a knife, the F3NS would win the prize. So when Shirogorov came up with with the Elemental series, that's what I call it. So that's Ur, Earth, Air, Fire, and Water. Uh, they call it something like Terrace, Aquatic, Igneous and Aram, Northern Wind. Uh, I, I put a lot of effort into, into finally uh, getting this, this, uh, this set uh, because it's my favorite knife. And I generally don't, I generally don't like to get the same knife in just different scales, but just the Elemental uh, series uh, of knives, I think looks really, really, really cool. Uh, that's against the terrace, and they're made in different steels. Uh, this one is an S90V. The 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 aquatic is made in Vanex. It's kind of fitting. M390 for the Ignis, and LMAX for the Northern Wind. Uh, they come with unique uh, beads, uh, and it's it's my favorite knife. 
Um, this one is, is uh, a Sinkovich, a Dmitry Sinkovich a collaboration. Uh, and this one is, it, it's, it's kind of unique um, because on one side uh, you have uh, this, this, it's, it's kind of a sheep's foot grind, but it's, you got kind of the main, the primary variable and then a secondary variable, right? That's, that's, that's what you've got. And then on this side, it's a little bit different. You've got the flat and then I'm going to call it a, a primary and then the secondary is kind of a big one but it goes down to a zero edge so this is more of a chisel uh, edge so uh so so this one is 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 kind of it's kind of a it's kind of a unique a, a unique knife it's it, it's it's a little bit more I don't know futuristic is probably the word uh but if you so much just look at that lock bar, it will not deploy. So it, it's a little finicky in, in regards to action. And closing it is just is just a dream. So I finish up with Shirogorov. Uh, I, I finish up with Shirogorov because I think that the F3NS is the best knife, the best production knife out there. I don't think there's a better knife. Uh, you could argue that there's a lot of value in an F3NS. Uh, I think you get just phenomenal fit and finish, phenomenal action, phenomenal cutting, phenomenal materials, uh, and I just think they make a tremendous, a tremendous knife. It's it's a liner lock, but it's more like a it's more like a like a like a frame lock. I I, I talk about it in my review of the F three N S. So if you really want to see that, you can go go check it out. Um, but um, what happens is you see you can see that you can see the the titanium from from uh, from this side right so it's more like like a frame lock with overlays uh so but you don't have the problem of that you have in this one this is the cami uh, you don't have the the problem of the cami where you might put your finger and you can't deploy it because it's more of a it's more of a frame lock that is protected uh so uh, again, the F3 NS. Uh, if 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 I had to recommend to to anyone to put a knife on their top grail list, that would be the F3 NS. I don't think there's a better knife out there, at least not none that I tried. And if you stuck around till the end, then you know that I have uh, a, a pretty good collection of knives. I've tested a lot of knives, and the F3 NS is just. It's just uh, it's just the best knife out there. Uh, I and I'm not alone in thinking that. If you if you look at the uh, other knife reviewers, uh, you'll find you'll find a lot of that same. Well, hopefully, guys, we've come to the end. We made it. Uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, you liked it. The collection is likely to remain the same size, but you're very likely to see a lot of new knives in in the collection. I'm trying to to kind of. Uh, purge a good probably 40 or 50 knives from my collection uh, and that's going to happen and uh, be ready for an announcement in my channel about how that's going to go if if you're interested in any of the knives that i mentioned that i'm going to get rid of so hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did then like and subscribe and until i see you at the next one take care